Hello all, I'm Reed Graff, the student coach for Team 17682 Temper X. Uh, so last time we talked about the common variable data types, including primitive data types and reference data types. Uh, primitive data types being just uh, data types that hold just uh, like values, uh, whether it be true or false in the case of a Boolean, or in an integer it'd be a number, uh, or in a double it'd be a decimal. Uh, in a reference data type, however, um, you have values as well as functions on top of those values, and we're going to talk more about that in these next few slides. But first and foremost, how do we actually identify these reference data types? So see if you do this quiz yourself, uh, although it's, it's kind of difficult, but there's actually a tip for identifying whether something's a reference or a primitive data type. That being that said, all primitive data types are going to have a lowercase letter first, and all reference data types are going to have an uppercase letter. So going back to this, in this case, this would be a primitive, this would be a reference, this would be primitive, this would be a reference, a reference, and then primitive. So what actually is the difference between primitive type and reference data type? Not in terms of how to identify them. And then once again, we kind of already just said the, basics, uh, the basic difference between the two is that primitive holds values, whereas reference data types hold values as well as functions on top of those values. So write code that outputs the quotient from a variable with the value of 10.2 and with the value of 6. So if we go back, we talked about this in the last video where we can actually make integers, uh, make variables, and then actually make mathematical functions on top of those and return the output of that. So go ahead and do this as a quiz. And then once you're done with that, we can move on to the next one. And then this is a solution. So for example, we define the variable uh, as a double variable type, and with the variable name variable underscore one, we set it equal to 10.2. And then uh, the reason we use a double two is because doubles use des uh, are data types for decimals, whereas int is just a data type for um, non-decimal values. So, but here, because it's a six, we need to do a variable two, and then set the value of six, and then we divide the two, and then we print the output, and there it is, 1.7. So in this example, we had to use double because we're dealing with decimals. And then once again, the code for this is right here. So how about casting? So oftentimes we will try and divide ints that should produce a decimal output because, but they won't because the data types being an int won't allow for decimal output. So um, on the left, the output shouldn't be three. So for example, when you divide uh, 30 by nine, it shouldn't be three. It would actually be 3.3 repeating. But in order to get that without actually changing the value of the data type is casting, uh, which is a very useful tool, which is great, especially for trying to make uh, low memory based applications. So in this case, we're going to make variable one, we're going to cast it to a double. So basically temporarily make it a double. And then same for variable two, we're going to temporarily make it a double. And then we're going to output uh, that value. And that's going to actually be the correct value, 3.3 repeating. So um, to the left, once again, we momentarily make the variables double so that the output would be correct using casting. So how about strings? So this is one of the reference data types that we talked about. Uh, strings are explained earlier as a reference data type. And an example of how to initialize a string variable is displayed to the left. So earlier we just did system.out.println and then we did the uh, quotations and then within those quotations we actually did a string but this is actually how you make uh, a variable by itself and then print that variable. So as you see it do the same thing as we replace random string name with this value. So how about appending the string? So say we have a string and we want to add more data to that and so we're able to do that uh, using just a plus sign similar to just a mathematical function. Uh, so say we define uh, the string with a variable name, random string name, uh, it's a string data type. We set it equal to temporing, and then say we want to print that as well as we want to append to the end of it, space, and then is the best person ever. And then as you see, once we print it, it's going to print temporing space, is the best person ever. So it's just appending these two strings together. So how about printing only one part of a string? So say we don't want to print the entire string, we only want to print like the last three letters. So if we want to find out whether or not a word has ing at the end of it. So in order to do something like that, we can do the function that I talked about, the functions on top, because it's a reference data type, it has a value as well as functions on top of that. So this is an example of one of those functions. So say we have this random underscore uh, string underscore name as our variable name, and then we want to find um, a substring of it. So in order to do that, we would write the variable name. So we're going to system dot out print out and then random underscore string underscore name. And then in order to do the function on top of it, we put the variable name and then we put dot, and then we want to do the method or function. In this case, we're going to do substring. So we'll do substring, and then in um, parentheses four. And that being saying, uh, that being said, it's going to print uh, that substring where four is the beginning index. Uh, and then there's also another substring method where you can use a beginning index and an ending index. Uh, so as you can see on the output, the first one is just four, so it's just a last name. Uh, so it's going to be pouring. 
And then we have p, so just four or five, so uh, the four index value, and then not five, so this is inclusive and then not inclusive. Um, and then poor, so four comma eight. Um, but these are known as method signatures, so effectively just uh, the method contents and the different parameters that it takes. But how do those index numbers actually work? Those seem somewhat arbitrary at the moment, but this is actually how you index strings. So you may have heard of counting from uh, one, so whenever you like count time, you usually start at one, two, three, four, or count numbers or cards. But when it comes to computer science, you actually start at zero. So it can, this is a string, right? So foobar is a string. A string index would start with f being index zero, so the first O being index one, the second O being index zero, B being index three, and so on and so forth throughout the rest of the string. So going back to this now, that makes sense. So temporing T is going to be zero, I is going to be one, M is going to be two, the space is going to be three, and the P is going to be four. So that makes sense for this first substring value, where you print substring four, and it's going to print the last, uh, the whole last uh, name. So good time. Write code that outputs a substring where the beginning index and ending in index are defined by other variables that you defined earlier. So once again, this is pretty easy. I'd say go ahead and pause this now, um, but otherwise I'm going to go ahead and skip to the solution. Uh, we don't actually have a solution, but effectively all you have to do is instead of writing for here, you just define an integer earlier on and then use that variable name and, and replace, uh, replace for. So once again, this just get you more comfortable with using data types and then uh, integrating them into methods and functions. All right, so now looking into the Java string documentation, writing that describes how a piece of code works, which is what the documentation is, and implement the string method, length. Uh, so use that method and output the length of a string. So uh, the reason we're getting you to do this is because being able to effectively search through and understand documentation is vital to becoming a good software engineer. It's something you have to do all the time. And that's pretty self-explanatory too. Effectively, we're going to implement that the same way as substring. So instead of doing right now underscore string underscore name dot substring for, we're going to do literally dot length and then nothing into the parentheses following. And that's going to output, output the length of that uh, string. So now how will we write code that outputs the last letter in a string? So to do this, you will need to use the, and implement the function dot length and use it with the substring function correctly. So you need to use both of them. So uh, go ahead and pause this and figure it out. But otherwise, the answer to this, let's see if we have it made. If we don't have it made, but the answer to this would be uh, you have to do um, uh, the string name. So random.string.name, and then you have to do dot substring. But instead of four, you have to do random.string.name. So replace four with random.string.name dot length, and then minus one. Because once again, uh, the index it's going to, the index of the last letter is going to be the length minus one. So that's why I have to have that minus one at the end. Um, so how, how about now you look into the Java string documentation, implement a string method that takes a string variable as an input and outputs the int variable representing the string input string's location. Um, and the hence is this is going to be it. So go ahead and look for this function in the documentation and then implement that. This is the signature for the index of function. Uh, so that concludes all of this video, and in the next video we're going to go over Boolean variable, variable data types uh, as well as how to compare different data types um, and query information.